Hello, how you doing out there guys? This is our episode 3 and this is Uncle Yab and you're listening to Gabbing with Yab. Now today, the topic will be interracial relationships. Now, this particular topic is uh, pretty dear to my heart because I was in an interracial relationship. I was married to a Caucasian woman for nine years. And uh, that's why I chose to talk about it because a lot of people, they don't want to talk about it. They feel the door is taboo. But I'm here to say, and I'm also here to tell you guys that that's what's going on. That's what's going on today. You know, you have different races mixing and matching. And you have interracial marriages, you have interracial dating, you have interracial relationships, and it's definitely widespread. I'm here up in Boston, and you see it all the time here, because Boston, Massachusetts is multicultural, so you're going to definitely see a lot of mixing and matches of the races and things like that. I, for one, I like to talk about my situations. I was married for nine years to the to a Caucasian lady. We have two beautiful daughters, and um, it was it was a little different. It was different for me. Um, first of all, when you're dealing with interracial relationships, you got a lot of stuff that you have to um, think about. It. Main, mainly family members. You know, are your family going to approve of him or her? How will they will they accept you? Will they kick you out? Will they shun you? Will they kick you out of the wheel? <laughs> and you never know what may happen with individuals because you never know the way people are thinking. Back in the old days, my grandma used to tell me, boy, you better stay in your race. <laughs> and she was from North Carolina. And um, to be honest with you, I couldn't wait to get my whole, my hands on some of them. Not because she said that, but... Just being a man and just being me, just exploring. And um, like I said, it could be a it could be a touchy situation. It can be different. Me and my ex wife, we um, went through a few things, and we ended up divorced. I'm happily divorced now for for a little almost three years. And um, I'm not going to bash her or anything like that. But what I will tell you is, the way I look at it is, what what was my thing as far as my divorce is I look at it as I just married the wrong woman and things can happen you can marry the wrong person and it can all fall apart no matter how much you make it no matter how much you have kids or how many times you try to force things to happen if you're not what I call evenly yoked if you're not compatible if you don't have something in common sooner or later it's going to break down the marriage is going to break down, the relationship is going to break down, and you're going to come to a divorce or some type of breakup. And then, and that's bad because in my situation, I had just turned 50, and this was this was my second marriage, and I was like, "Come on, man, you got to you got to get this right." But things happen, things happen, and um, right now I'm in a a good place in my life where I'm enjoying my divorce. I'm enjoying doing me and I'm enjoying taking care of my kids and which I've always done and it also opened up my eyes to a few different things I had to look at myself in the mirror and and, and, and ask myself how, how much can I tolerate what is my breaking point what are some of the things that I need to require in a woman and the things that I always thought that I was good about or thought that I wanted in a woman this young lady didn't have this lady didn't have so I'm not like I said not bashing her but make a long story short we just wasn't compatible now I know a lot of other couples out there that's the interracial couples and things like that and um, hopefully you guys are getting along and doing what you're supposed to do but it's definitely uh, definitely hard first of all me being an Afro-American man I like certain foods 
and my ex-wife definitely couldn't cook the food that I like. And it wasn't her fault, it just that she wasn't used to it. She tried, and she tried, and she tried. And I, and I always went back to my mother and say, Mom, how you cook this? How you cook that? <laughs> but um, it's hard because now you have to, that, that wife or that lady that you're dealing with that's not your ethnicity has to make sure she can please you or, or make sure she puts a smile on your face. And it goes both ways. The male have to do the same thing. And I'm not saying conform. But I, I am saying that we should be able to come to an agreement. And a lot of people say, oh, we can do things 50-50. No, I'm going to do it 100-100. If you're going to do things right or you're going to make a relationship or a marriage work, you have to. she have to come with 100% and you have to come with 100%. Because if not, it's going to fail. It's going to fail every time. But that's... That's either here nor there. You still have to pick up the piece and do what you got to do. Now, a lot of times when you're dating different from a different environment from out of your race, that you might have cultural differences. You might have religious differences. And you just might have family members that just, just not don't like it or just can't see it. You know, so you got to deal with a lot of different things. You got to deal with a lot of different things. Just remember... In 2019, and um, everybody's doing everything. And I'm not to say just because of 2019, you go do what you got to do and do what you, and do what you think is right. But just remember this: when you're dealing with any woman or any man, whether he or she is red, green, blue, or brown, he is a man first, and she is a woman first. Before she's a white woman, Caucasian woman, black man. White man, Puerto Rican man, Puerto Rican woman. There are men and there are women first. And then, you know, everything else really doesn't matter. But what does matter is how that person treats you, how that person makes you feel, and if he or she loves you unconditionally, not just for the time being. Or all of a sudden he or she gets tired of you because relation because a marriage is a matrimony. You know what they say to death do us part. So you got to put that in consideration. And not only that, you have to have some type of uh, camaraderie there. It has to be some type of percentage of what you can tolerate. And that's with any marriage, interracial or not. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of um, interaction. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of discussing. It's a lot of soul searching. It's a lot of crying. And you have to come to a conclusion. What can you tolerate? What can you be able to stand in he or she? After that, or or during that time, you have kids. Kids coming into the relationship, and a lot of time, kids can um, make a relationship sour. Not to say kids are not good or anything like that, but a lot of times when when parents or when couples have kids, a lot of a lot of the things that they are dealing with gets put on the back burner. Because of course you got to raise your kids. But but I will tell you guys this: married couples, interracial married couples, or whatever. You have to make time for your spouse. Make time for each other. Have what you call an adult night out. Have what you, have what I call a sexy day where you go out with your wife, girlfriend, significant other, or however it may be, and just enjoy the time spent with you guys. Because, you know, the, the, rigor, the rigors of raising a family and going to work and coming home and raising kids... That can get a little sour. It can get a little tough. So trust me, you have to make time for each other. You know, bring her flowers or something like that. You know, just tell her we're going to go on a date night. You know, maybe maybe he needs a, a new towel, or some underwear. Or just tell, or just call him and tell him, hey, baby, I'm thinking about you or something like that. That's always good. That's always good. You know, and once um. Once you do things like that, you putting forth an effort. You putting forth that hundred percent. But like I said, it's a two way street, 
And if you putting a hundred percent into that that marriage or to that affair, you need the other person to put in a hundred percent because it can't be a, a one way street when it comes to a relationship. Both of you have to put in a hundred percent and a hundred percent to make it work. And the biggest thing that I see wrong with different relationships or different couples, communication. You have to talk, people. You have to talk. She can't read your mind. He can't read your mind, ladies. You know, so you got to communicate. I'm not a, I'm not a magician. I don't have a crystal ball. So we got to sit down and figure out what's going on. You know, what's, what's, what's going on at, at work? Is something bothering you at home? Do you have health problems? Maybe we can work it out together. And with couples of any race, if you guys have a problem, sit down and talk. Sit down and work it out. You know, see what's going on. Get it out in the open, and you'll feel a lot better. You'll feel a lot better. A lot of interracial couples, they deal with a lot of different issues. Like I told you, um, the, way, the way people were brought up, you know, uh, I know one thing as far as the religious thing. I was uh, brought up and raised Baptist. My ex-wife was Catholic, and I just wasn't into the Catholic religion. Nothing. Against, I don't have nothing against it. I just wasn't into it. So, I mean, she wasn't an avid Catholic, but she did was raised Catholic. So we had our kids Christian in the Catholic Church, but after that. We never stepped foot in the church. Not that I didn't want to, but I knew that I wanted to be in a Baptist setting. I, that's where I was raised, and that's what, I, that's what I wanted to do. And once again, she wasn't for that. And like I said, that's a, that's a that's a strain. That can definitely be a strain on a relationship. Or she wasn't willing to say, "Well, you go ahead and do your thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do my thing, or whatever." You de- and definitely you have to have support. If you don't have support on both parts, your relationship, your marriage is going to break down. Regardless of what's going on, you need support. Whether it's helping the kids with their schoolwork, whether it's cooking in the kitchen, you may want to help fixing a car. You know, I know I know some ladies that that, that that help you fix a car, and that's cool. If that's cool, as long as she is she out there getting greasy like you're doing, then that's a good. That's a she's all right. That's a good woman. <laughs> that's a good woman. So keep her, definitely keep her. You know, but women and men are different. They they really different. They they made different. They built different. And I always say, it's about love, commitment, and it's definitely about what you can tolerate. If if, if she's a good woman for you. Then that's all. That's all that matters. Who cares about what your family say? Because at the end of the day, your family ain't sleeping with her. Your family ain't waking up to her. Your family not, you know, doing things that you and her, you you and you and her do together. Your family just seeing things from their mind and their perspective, which might not be always the right thing. And you guys know as well as I know, sometimes family members can be hard on you. Sometimes they can help you, sometimes they can hurt you. But God knows I love all my family. But like I said, sometimes family can see things that you can't see. They might not tell you, but at the end of the day or at the end of the relationship, hey, you know, I never did like that woman. She was something else. Okay, now you tell me. But at the end of the day, like I said, you have to make the decision on your own. You can't just have families dictating your relationship. You definitely have to make a decision and come to a conclusion that is this the woman that I want to be for the rest of my life or just the man that I want to be with the rest of my life? Okay, I'm dealing with certain flaws here, flaws there. But once again, it's what you can tolerate. It's a percentage of you can tolerate. With you. You can feel it, if you feel as though you can get over the hump with certain things or she might get better or he might get better, then go with it. Then go with it. But if it's something, if you're trying and trying and trying and that particular person just, uh, you know, can't see the light of day or just not on the same page as you. And once again, once again, I'll say it. If you guys are not evenly yoked, that's that's the main thing. 
then it's not going to work. It's not going to work, you guys. But having somebody is, is a beautiful thing. You know, right now, you know, I'm, I'm doing some dating out there and things like that. And I have a I have a girlfriend a little over a year now. And once again, I'm in the interracial status and she's a good person. She's a really good person. Definitely what I'm looking for in a woman. So but when but before I found her, I was definitely hard on them. I was definitely saying, hey, I need to to do some interviews. <laughs> I want to make sure she's right for me. I want to make sure her and I can laugh and joke. I want to make sure she likes the same foods that I like. And that's another thing. She got to like the same food. If, if she don't like seafood or soul food or whatever, you can you can you may can get away with it with the soul food because not everybody eats soul food. But if you're a seafood man, you definitely want your significant other to like seafood as well because it'll make it the transition just that much easier. And you know, a lot of things, a lot of things. She may not, she may not parent like you do. You may, you may be a be a Gestapo, or she may be lenient on the kids. So once again, you got to sit each other down and come to an agreement on how you're going to do things. Because if you're pushing and pulling, and if you're not going forward the right way, that's going to be another strain. It's going to be another strain. But I'm all for marriages, regardless if it's interracial or not. It's just that the two I had didn't work out. <laughs> but, um, hey... I'm getting bad at it. You you learn and you grow. And I learned a lot about myself in those two marriages, a, a lot about myself. And it took me 52 years. But I think I halfway got it right. And I think I, I think I understand what I want as as a you know for my partner. And I think I have it in a young lady now. So you know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're doing what we're doing. We're, we're, we're letting it go at, with the flow, like I always say. And who, who knows? Who knows what may happen? So this is my thing. I'm passing on to all you guys out there. If you're in a, if you're in an interracial, interracial relationship, always make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's. Make sure that significant person is right for you because you have to always realize and keep in the back of your head he or she is coming from a different a different ethnic background different views different values so if you guys don't have something in common it's going to be hard it's really going to be hard and once again don't look at he or she as a black man or white woman she's a woman first He's a man first before the color is a factor in anything. You definitely got to have some love. Definitely got to have some affection. And if you if you if you're um if you into the God, into your religion, that has to be one thing too. Both of you guys have to be on one accord with that. You have to believe. If you don't believe, then both of you guys just don't believe. But I don't think you have a person that believes and a person that don't believe. I don't think that's going to work. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion from my Uncle Yab. And I'm I'm here just passing on some good information because I got a lot to say. So I'm going to let you guys know. I'm going to be here again with another podcast because I got a lot on my mind. And I'm here to do this. So hopefully you guys will support me. And I'll be putting my stuff out periodically. And... Hopefully everything goes well with your relationship, wherever you are, whether it's interracial or, you know, same, same relation or same, same ethnic group. God bless you on it and have a good night.